A Teaching Method Guide Chapter 1 Basic Teaching Methods How to Learn and Teach The easiest way is to try to get the kid or the adult to tap into their natural sense of curiosity and inspiration before they get brainwashed by the world as to what constitutes success and fun. They did studies on monkeys. When they started rewarding them for things they did anyway for fun, the monkeys stopped doing them on their own. So a human being has a choice. Pursue what's natural inside of you. Buy into the world's system of rewards and punishments. That's it, try to get someone to learn for a natural love of it. If you can't do that, offer them either rewards or punishments. When I was in the military, they made us learn a bunch of pre-packaged bits of information. They tested us on it every few days. You either passed the test or you failed the course. It was totally a reward punishment system. If you look up Montessori or Waldorf approaches to education, they start with the individual, focus on what they like then develop from there whereas the system starts with X number of courses in grade school, imposes them on you then lets the chips fall where they may with the students. Some like it and succeed. Others find it artificial and turn off but that's our system. It's not right but we cannot afford to treat every child like a natural genius and help them develop. Make a choice and live with it. There has to be a middle ground between following your natural inclinations and living within society which means following the rules and earning money to pay your bills. If you start with a kid as a freewheeling hippie parent, the kid was no system of structure, order, or morals. All kids are brainwashed and stupid no matter how smart they appear to be. They all want to be superstar athletes, movie stars, fashion models, etc. That's why they all need some kind of system of rules. It's even in the book of Proverbs in the Bible. Proverbs 22, 6 Start children off on the way they should go and even when they are old they will not turn from it. There are thousands of learning books and articles. I just told you what's in all of them put together that's wise and good. Don't try to complicate the process of learning. If you do, you're just another asshole like all the stupid academics trying to justify their meaningless jobs with pedantic sounding bullshit. There are other ideas of learning like the following. The coolness idea, make something appear cool or popular in the peer group. Make the culture a certain way, people confirm. Look at the Muslims, they're taught to conform from childhood and if they don't, they're heavily punished. See the YouTube channel Apostate Prophet. Do favors, be a friend, if you help someone, they feel like they owe you and will try to be good students. Some people are naturally stupid. It might seem easy and obvious to you but the person does not have the gray matter to learn it. People have personal problems. A kid from a home of poverty and domestic violence is barely surviving. How can he be a good student? People develop at different ages. Some kids are late bloomers. By 23, everybody should have a mature brain. There seems to be a critical period for some things. All early learning is a waste. By 7 years old, everyone is pretty well equal. If you present stuff like computer programming early, the kid might catch on then he's got it for life but if you wait until the kid is 20, it might be too late. All true geniuses with a strong sense of natural inspiration living in a modern society where they have the means and the ability to develop, always end up living by their own natural genius. That's what enlightenment is. School is irrelevant to the genius. They're going to go their own way regardless of whether school is good or bad. Everything in that fake field called educational psychology is a big bunch of crap like these bubble-headed ideas. McGregor's X and Y Theory Motivational orientations. Brain lobes. Left and right hemisphere. Cognitive mode specialization. Stages of psychomotor development. Cognitive roles of language. Piaget's developmental stages. Every academic nerd has an ego. He or she wants to feel like they're contributing something unique to their field so they do their stupid little studies that are in the stupid social science journals out there but they don't realize that a human being is not scientific. They're spiritual aesthetic beings. They can't be studied scientifically. Don't do the scientific method on people. 
it's stupid. Then they teach this other stupid idea which is if you can't measure it, it's not real. Every human being is a loner with their loner minds. You can't measure that. There is no science of human behavior even though the American Psychological Association has 52 subcategories. It's madness and most people are brainwashed into thinking somebody knows something deep and advanced about human life that they don't know because we're brainwashed that way, to buy into the lie of experts in everything, even in human life. What about love and learning, love the person, try to help them? Nothing has changed since the mythical King Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs. Teach a lesson info. Plan your lesson. Start off smoothly and relaxed. Have a simple title and main point for the lesson. Have an introduction, the main points then the conclusion. Try to build on students' prior knowledge. Keep the content organized. Be positive and enthusiastic about the subject matter. Be clear. Emphasize key points. Encourage student participation. Try questions and answers. Strive for a peaceful class atmosphere. Break the class up into small group discussions to get them to know each other. Have a straightforward evaluative procedure. Occasionally use multimedia like an overhead projector, video, etc. Teaching with specific learning outcomes slash learning outcomes teaching. Learning outcomes are objectives that a teacher has for a course. He or she defines what the student will know after taking a course. An informal learning outcome statement is usually a course summary or course review. A formal learning outcome statement has the following characteristics. Written in the future tense. Identifies important learning requirements. Is achievable and accessible. Uses language which students can understand. Relates to explicit statements of achievement. There are generally five possible types of learning outcomes. An increase in knowledge, learn something. Memorized some knowledge that will probably be forgotten. Learned how to do something like do a scientific experiment. Learned a sophisticated concept. Learned something real life like how to buy a house. You might be teaching a basic course in a subject where there are, are some terms and ideas the students must know. You might want students to develop the ability to think on their own in the subject matter. The lecture method. The lecture method is the simplest way to teach. Stand at the front of the class and talk. Use your notes or talk off the top of your head. Use the chalkboard or use overhead projector slides. Use other things like video, handouts, etc. Think of what bores you. Don't be like that as a teacher. If the material is dry, do it quickly. Move on to more interesting stuff. Try to have interesting tidbits and stories for some points. Don't just teach straight out of the textbook. In that case, why bother lecturing? Tell them to read the book and ask questions in class about it. To teach in college, you don't need to learn how to teach. You get a doctorate in any field and they say you can teach so you end up with really bad professors who talk in a monotone right out of the book with no creative ideas of their own added in. I didn't like to give long lectures so I usually lectured for about 25 minutes then told the class to break off into small groups where I would give them some question to discuss for 15 minutes then with 5 minutes left, each group gave a short statement about the question. Discussion with the whole class is almost impossible because very few people want to talk in front of the class but they love to be in little groups. I got the highest student ratings of teachers in my department. I think it was mostly because of the small group stuff. Most kids in college don't know the kids sitting beside them in their classes. Let them talk to each other in small groups and all of a sudden you got the best class in the school. I did my part. I gave the 25 to 30 minute lecture then for the rest of the class, they had fun. The subject matter I taught was lightweight social science. I didn't need to lecture for 50 minutes every day. It worked for me. Students learn better if they think about what they are learning so slow down and give them pauses to think about it or ask questions that they have to think about. Mix active participation and creative ideas into your lecturing rather than just talk while the student listens. During a lecture, tell them when you are making a key point. 
The lecture is the teacher providing a framework of the course that is probably the same thing as the table of contents in the textbook. Fill it in with extra knowledge, details, and stories. Make the, the lecture more like active communication than passive learning. When you lecture, either give out handouts of the outline or write it out on the chalkboard either beforehand or as you teach. I remember one guy who came in probably an hour before the lecture, wrote the entire outline on the blackboard then went through it point by point. Do not overload a lecture with content. Students can learn only so much at a time. The more students participate, the less likely they are to fall asleep. Provide a summary of the main points at the end of the lecture. Many lecturers publish their lecture notes on their websites. Start with a clear and interesting opening statement. Clearly organize each section. Highlight the main key points. Have a final summary and conclusion. Ask if anyone has any questions. Pose questions and problems to solve. If somebody disrupts the class by talking amongst themselves or talking on the cell phone, don't make a big deal out of it. Just tell the person to leave. Just say, go, take the rest of the class off. Don't take the guy's name. Just let him go. They usually come back next time and don't bother you anymore. If they do, take their name then. Good lecturing is 1. Go through the material smoothly. 2. Present it in an organized framework. 3. Teach with enthusiasm. 4. Give good explanations. 5. Introduce ideas from beyond the text. 6. Have some intensity like love for the material. 7. The lecturer is friendly. 8. The lecturer is available to talk after the lecture. 9. The lecturer tries to connect with the students, tries to get them to feel inspired. 10. Pauses to give students time to absorb the material. 11. Reviews the material at least once at the end of the lecture. 12. Constantly repeats the main points. Effective lectures are structured and inspired. Multimedia presentations like PowerPoint are good but they're only a tool. You still have to teach the material. Peer Tutoring Info There are two types of peer tutoring. 1. The teacher gets a smart kid in the class to help a dumb kid. 2. At some small private schools, the students in the junior class are assigned a peer tutor a year ahead of them. They go to that person if they need academic help. Education.cu-portland.edu slash blog slash teaching hyphen strategies slash how hyphen to hyphen set hyphen up hyphen a hyphen peer hyphen tutoring hyphen program hyphen in hyphen your hyphen high hyphen school comma academic accomplishments. Problem based learning info slash project based learning, PBL, slash learn by doing slash independent study. Project-based learning gets away from the typical course where a student learns a certain amount of information then takes tests. With PBL, students do projects either alone or in groups. They call this independent study too. The teacher might pose a problem and ask the students to solve it or he or she might give them a general topic to explore. Teach whatever it is you're teaching then give students real-life practical applied problems to work on related to your field both alone and in small groups. Find case studies, present them leaving enough information out for them to try to solve it their way. State the problem clearly. Clarify any ambiguous points. Students analyze the problem. They collect information then think about it. They present their different solutions. You could have a discussion of the different solutions and possibly present the best one. 4teachers.org slash project based Amatrol.com slash program slash project hyphen based hyphen learning. Edutopia.org slash project hyphen based hyphen learning. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash project hyphen based underscore learning. Project based learning.com. Project learning scholastic.com. Small group teaching info. Small group teaching is teaching anywhere from 2 to 20 students in a relaxed setting where they speak up and contribute when they feel like it. It's not practical because in most school jurisdictions, the teacher is given a class with a size of 25 or more. Secondly, 
small group teaching is very idealized in movies and TV shows where they show a teacher and several students engaged in wise intellectual discussion united as friendly deep thinkers but in real life students like to talk amongst themselves without a teacher around. Once the teacher is there, they all clam up except for the egotistical brown-nosing types. They're kind of phony and superficial. Everybody is insecure. Everybody is on this mainstream wavelength. They don't want to look weird by presenting an offbeat idea. Small group teaching looks good in movies. In real life, students want the teacher to talk at them while they sit there passively taking notes. They like to be in small discussion groups left alone by the teacher. That's as good as it gets. You can't idealize teaching too much. Most of it is transferring basic existing knowledge from a book into your voice to uninitiated ears. The social sciences are basically a bunch of BS anyway but they still insist that you follow a canned program like a textbook. If anyone is a great thinker, he will come to his great insights on his own. Chances are it's not gonna happen in school. Most great intellectuals make their discoveries alone, studying the material because they love it. I tried asking questions and getting discussions going but I gave up because the same few brown-nosing nerds always spoke up and that was the extent of it. People don't want to talk in groups with a teacher around. It's that simple. Put them in small groups then sit by yourself in front of the class and they talk so much it gets loud. There is nothing that intense or profound that you need to force people to sit around in a group and discuss in the hopes that they will come to greater insights like the dialectic methods used by ancient Greeks to come to their own truths about issues. The creative flow of ideas generally does not happen in groups. One guy gets an idea. He shares it with a friend who shares it with a friend then it might eventually make its way to a corporate boardroom meeting but by then, all the creative work has been done. With all the group discussions I've been in in my life, I still think they were nothing next to an inspired guy writing a great original article about something. There is just too much ego, insecurity, jostling for position and timidity involved with small groups. There are several types of small group teaching scenarios. A brainstorming session is a situation where the group is posed a problem and told to generate as many ideas as they can think up to try to solve it. A free discussion group is where the students alone talk. The teacher either watches or is not around. A problem-solving group gets a problem which they try to solve together ending at one solution. People take on characters or avatars in a role-playing group. A self-help group is a group of people helping each other with a common problem they all have like an e-toing disorder or alcoholism. In a workshop or seminar, someone presents a short lecture then the group talks about it. A project is a group of people working to create something. A tutorial is a group of students reviewing stuff for an upcoming test with the teacher. Collaborative online learning info. In spiral.cdlr.strath.ac.uk, collaborative online learning. jisc.ac.uk slash mle slash reps slash briefings slash bp1.html. Leads.ac.uk slash edu col slash nci